Hello everyone. Hope you are doing well. And as always, if you are new to my channel, I would humbly request you subscribe to my channel so that you shall be able to watch all the latest engineering videos that uh, I will put on my channel for you guys. Thanks. So the problem at hand is basically the state of plane strain at a point is represented by components epsilon x is being given a value of uh, 250 micro. Okay, so the first value is 250 micro and the second value is minus 150 micro and uh, gamma xy is basically uh, 120 micro. Okay, so just to see uh, they are, in, are interested in calculating the maximum in plane shear strain uh, and the orientation of the element, okay, the, uh, uh, which is gamma xy max. Okay, and along that, you can also see what is the absolute uh, maximum uh, in plane shear strain, also. And uh, as already told you, you have to be very careful when the principal strains come, and then you can decide that uh, what type of uh, uh, shear strains you will select for the absolute maximum and for the maximum shear strains. So they will govern whether epsilon 1, epsilon p1, epsilon p2 are same or whether epsilon p1, p2 are different. Okay. So this is the main thing that is very important over here in understanding this concept. So if we go here and uh, we can see the first value is basically uh, the first value given to us is basically 250 micro, 250 250 micro okay and this is a positive the second value is basically uh, given to us as 150 micro it is 150 micro but uh, they are saying that this value is negative okay we can double check it it is minus 150 micro and uh, the gamma xy given to us is basically 120 micro okay it is 120 micro so 120 micro and uh, it is uh, since no sign is there it's counted clockwise and uh, these are the values given and uh, if you look at it there is no simple problem there is no orientation of the element being discussed here a very very simple problem to understand the concept of maximum plane shear strains okay so let's see how he calculates it and uh, this is what he gets uh, once he calculated it again from these values uh, that we basically get, uh, if you look, look uh, here, again, uh, this was, was basically our origin. This was basically our origin. And uh, if you look at it, uh, the first value that uh, he has given to us is basically uh, 250 micro. And the first value from the origin is basically uh, from here it is basically 250 micro and again that value is basically for this point okay and uh, if you look at it uh, the second value that he has uh, given to us is this is 250 micro and the second value is going to be from this point it will be uh, minus 150 micro okay so it will be on the other side okay? so just uh, to help you uh, with that and again then the value of uh, gamma xy that has been given is 120 micro so when we plot it it will be the half so it will be the, from here this was the first point 250 micro and positive it goes down you get this point this center is already calculated you draw the circle okay so once this has been done there is no rotation and you can connect these two points and make your own uh, circle by means of your uh, uh, compass and then once it's been done by here you know that uh, you can calculate your uh, maximum angles out of it very, very easily and uh, basically how you can calculate it is basically from here if I move from this point to the other point if I move here it will be basically your what is called as your uh, theta p1 and if I move backward it will be your 2 theta s1 it will be your 2 theta s1 okay so we will be interested in basically what will be this 2 theta p1 and what will be this 2 theta s1 okay we can basically very easily calculate this length and we, can, we already know this length we can calculate this angle also okay so this is very easy this is going to be 2 theta s1 this is going to be 2 theta p, uh, p1 okay so let's see how the software responds to it 
So these are the values I put in and uh, the values after putting it, I get uh, this is the response. OK, so if you look at it, this response, uh, this is going to be your 2 theta P1. This is going to be your 2 theta P1. OK, this is your 2 theta P1 uh, and very easily this this is your uh, from here 2 theta P1. And again, on the element, it will always be the half. And if this is 16.7 principal stereo detection, it will be 8.35, half of that. And what about the other one? When we go back on the negative side, you know, basically, uh, it will be uh, 90 degrees. Basically, you have like, a, because when you go from here to this vertical y-axis, it will be 90 degrees minus 16.7. Uh, uh, so it will give you uh, basically a value of 73.3. So it, here to here, if I basically draw a line towards the vertical y-axis, it will be minus 73.3. So in the element, if you calculate to 2 theta s1, it will be uh, so basically from here to here, it's basically going to be, basically uh, you can take this angle like this, or if you want, you can also move like this also. But when you move like this, it will be 16.7 uh, plus 90. It will be basically 16.7 plus 90. So when you make it, uh, it will be basically plus 106, 16.7 plus 90 for 2 theta s1. And it will be basically 106.7 degrees. Okay. If you want to match these values. Okay. So 106.7, if you divide by 2, you will get uh, the value of 53.35. Okay. But it doesn't matter. Don't worry. If you move like this also, and you calculate an angle, what is called as 90 minus 16.7, and you that angle calculates 73.3 but you moving in clockwise so you can also make it as like this 2 theta s2 or uh, yeah 2 theta s1 this angle as minus 73.3 that is also right okay and uh, he was basically interested in calculating the uh, maximum plane shear strain for your uh, problem okay so if you look uh, this uh, basically this was our radius and you know uh, basically uh, our since uh, the values uh, our that, that we have here are basically uh, this is an elongation value this is basically uh, positive and uh, you know that uh, this value of your y epsilon y is basically uh, contraction this is positive this is negative when they when you have one positive and one negative here also and your epsilon p1 and epsilon p2 values are also one positive and one negative then you have basically uh, going to get different uh, absolute maximum shear strain and you'll get different uh, maximum shear strain okay which is uh, you can see here also so your basically absolute uh, uh, your your maximum uh, shear strain will be by drawing a more circle in 3d so you'll be getting your uh, gamma xy max as 417.6 micro and your absolute max gamma max is also 417.61 micro okay since uh, epsilon uh, p1 and epsilon p2 have the same signs then you always remember your gamma xy max and your gamma absolute max okay will be uh, the same they will be the same okay so this is a very important point that uh, you must remember okay so uh, your gamma xy max and your gamma absolute max are exactly the same because epsilon p1 and epsilon p2 have got uh, uh, what is called as different uh, signs okay they have got different so i hope you understand it uh, clearly this concept of uh, more strain circle i have tried to solve maximum problems uh, and one more thing that we missed over here if you look at it uh, you, uh, uh, this point which is your epsilon x dash is also being calculated which is with uh, 250 micro and your epsilon y dash is being calculated here as 150 micro and your uh, gamma x y gamma x dash y dash by 2 is being calculated as 120 micro here and here okay so i hope uh, this more strain circle is clearly understood by all of you guys and uh, i thank you uh, and you have a wonderful day